so I know it's been a little while since I said I was gonna do this. Uh, this is my Q&A video. Uh, I think I said it like two months ago, but anyway, uh, I'm now getting to it. So basically, I'm gonna, I picked out some questions that you guys were asking on um, YouTube and Instagram and some of my other social media stuff. And uh, first off, I'm gonna start out with some easy ones. So here are the questions I get asked most often. Uh, and these are really quick, so we're just gonna go through them real quick. First question is, what paper do you use? I use Tone Tan Strathmore 500 series. Uh, this paper I love because it's great for, it's a mid-tone, so it's great for drawing with highlights. What do you use for your highlights? So for my highlights, I use, I use Prismacolor white colored pencil. Uh, this is, it's soft, it blends well, and it's just, what it's easy to use for highlights. I sharpen this with, this used to be my go-to sharpener. It's like a Blick, just, it's got a little shavings trap in there so I can draw anywhere. Uh, but I recently purchased this Prismacolor one, and I like this one a lot better for a couple of reasons, but I'll get to those in a minute. Uh, then, what pencil do you use? This is a Geograph 500 0.5 Pentel mechanical pencil. Uh, I like the weight of it. It's got this nice metal thing on the front here. It kind of gives it a nice weight, so I like this. It feels, it feels like quality um, versus like a plastic mechanical pencil. I also have a um, 0.9, same, brand, uh, same kind, same brand and everything. This is a gray one. But um, that's what I've been using to draw. So, but I recently have been experimenting with, this is a Faber-Castell uh, set of uh, HB pencils. You got HB, B, 2B, and 4B. And I've been liking these. And this new sharpener really gives me a fine point on them. So that's what I used to draw. Uh, those, I get that question so many times, and I mentioned it before, it's just, you know, not everybody sees every video and sees, you know, that kind of stuff. So, those are the quick, easy questions. Uh, hopefully, people will see this video and I don't get too many, or you guys can help me out by answering when people uh, have those questions too, because I've seen people do that before and it's a big help. I love it when you guys do that, um, answer other people's questions. So, the first real question, uh, this question has to do with talent and ego. And this person said, I would like to know your opinion on talent and ego. I know they're a bit, I know they're a bit heavy, but I'd love to know your opinion on it. Early on, I would say in high school, I had a bit of an like ego problem, and it definitely is something that hinders your growth as an artist. Uh, so, and the funny thing is, is as I've evolved and gotten older, I realized what, how ridiculous I was in thinking, you know, that ego should be any part of drawing or anything like that. There's so many talented artists out there. If you have an ego, it's just because you're not looking hard enough at the world around you and seeing great artists that easily blow you away or are comparable to you. And my theories on art have a lot to do with um, really the ideas behind art because there are so many talented artists out there that can produce amazing works uh, technically. So ego, hat from, in my opinion, has no place in it. And if you feel that when somebody's trying to instruct you on art and you're just shutting them out like, hey, you know, I already know how to do that or, you know, why are you talking to me about this? I'm much more accomplished artist than you are you need to check yourself because that is really will really stint your growth as an artist. Uh, so I know I could go on and on about that, but that in a short take is my opinion on talent and ego, is if you see that in yourself, you really need to, to check that and say, hey, I need to take a step back because that is something that will really hinder your growth as an artist. Uh, so next question, when did you start drawing? Uh, I've told this story in my How I Learned to Draw video, but I started drawing these cardboard cutouts as action figures. Um, I love playing with action figures and Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. And, you know, 
my parents weren't wealthy by any means, and so I had a few toys to play with, and I wanted more, so I started drawing the characters and cutting them out and putting them on cardboard. That's when I really remember drawing and having a purpose to drawing, and drawing those characters and playing with them actually as action figures. Um, and I can remember that memory very vividly. It's, you know, it's one of those that sticks out in my mind. So that's when I started drawing and that was about, I was probably seven, six or seven, right in there, that I can remember really, you know, focusing on drawing. I'm sure I drew some scribbles here and there and stuff like that, so. What artist inspires you the most? Uh, there's a lot of artists, classical artists, uh, is Caravaggio. I loved his ideas behind his paintings that were also connected with him being a master artist. Uh, he's somebody in art school who I really focused on and loved. Uh, more modern, Frank Frazetta. His work is amazing, his paintings. Um, when I was more in high school, Jim Lee and the X-Men comics, I thought his artwork was just absolutely outstanding. Um, Todd McFarlane, same with Spawn, his just amazing understanding and anatomy with dynamic drawing. Uh, those were my comic book guys who I loved. Um, and then anime, I really like anime, I love how dynamic anime animation is. Uh, but those guys, um, and then obviously studying art history in college and stuff, Bernini, I mean those guys are absolute geniuses, the typical stuff like Leonardo and stuff, but Caravaggio was the guy that really stuck out to me. So I absolutely loved his artwork and that just helped my passion for art kind of grow. Okay, so here's a, a good question, and this is a question that I struggle with sometimes, but this is, how do you find time to draw with a full-time job and family? Is there a certain time of day uh, of the week you specifically designate to your sketches? Also, both you and Kara are very artistic. Does it run in both your families? And do you wish Elena and Emery will also be artistically inclined? Okay, so how do I find, that was like a lot of questions, but how do I find time? Uh, the biggest thing that's helped me is creating a routine. Uh, I draw my lunch breaks at work. Uh, it's a nice break, plus it gets my creative juices flowing because I am a designer, I'm an art director for a company, and so sitting down and drawing and doing something like that where I can just come up with a creative idea and put it down on paper, uh, that helps with other work, helps my brain get going. Um, and so that's where I find time to do my daily sketches. Then in the evenings, occasionally like to film these videos and stuff like that or do artwork. My daughters both are in bed by 9 o'clock. And so when they go to bed, uh, that's when I start drawing. Uh, so I don't have a whole lot of time to do artwork and stuff. I wish I had more time. I, I mean, that's, I would love that, but you know, I've got a family and stuff like that that I have to take care of. So that's when I draw. Um, I love the fact that Kara and I both draw. My mom loved to draw growing up, so that's where I get my, I think, passion or talent, I guess, or inclination to draw. Um, and. I've already started, and to go into the next part, I've already started working with Elena. Uh, I want to at least sit down with her three times a week and she and I draw together. Um, you guys kind of saw her in one of my last videos where she was doing the commentary with me uh, talking about drawing and stuff. So I hope, I hope that Elena has that in common with me. It's something that I, I know would make our relationship really great. And I hope Emery does too, my youngest daughter. She's not old enough to really show interest in it yet. but. Um, yeah, I hope as a family we can uh, go to art walks and appreciate art together and just have that in common as a family. Um, so yeah. Okay, here's a question. Here's a question that I get a lot. Uh, this is, I can only draw if I'm looking at the thing I'm drawing. Do you think it can be learned to have the kind of imagination and be able to transfer it to paper? I don't feel like I, I learned I don't feel like I could learn to be this good. Uh, a lot of my work is from my imagination um, and people ask me that all the time. A lot of people will say I can only draw by looking at something and so here's my take on that. Art or illustration and drawing from imagination to me is a lot like golf. I played golf in high school, I love golf, I still golf. Golf really sucks when you first start out. It's super frustrating. You imagine, when you step up to the ball, you imagine the shot you're gonna hit. 
and you think it's just going to go straight right over the horizon and that's the, you know that's what you're imagining is going to happen and then you step up and you go to hit it and that is not what happens you're lucky to hit the ball if you're just a beginner and so it's so frustrating in the beginning but once you get really good once you start directing those shots and you have more control over what you're trying to do it becomes so much more fun um, and art is very similar drawing when you're first starting out you don't have a lot of ideas in your head that you can pull from because basically when I'm drawing from my imagination, I'm pulling from all the times I've referenced drawings or referenced images, pictures and animals and anything, uh, movies I've seen even. Just, it's all a, an accumulation of reference. So once you get to a point where you have so much stockpile, so much reference stockpile that you can just sit there and say, I want to draw this and you imagine it in your head and then you can put it down on paper the way you're imagining it. Now when you're first starting out, you can't do that because you just don't have the references. You sit down, you imagine something in your head, and then you look down on the paper, and just like that golf shot, it doesn't look like what you imagined. It's not even close. And so it's really frustrating. And what I tell people is to really push through that. You have to push through that frustration and keep, and keep referencing. Now I reference maybe 20% of the time and 80% of the time I draw from my imagination. As where early on I referenced 80% of the time and drew from my imagination 20% of the time. It's because now I have so much stuff in my head that I can pull from that imagination. But you know, it's one of those things where as you've accumulated, as you get more stuff in there, it becomes so much more fun because you anything you can imagine just pops into your head and you can put it down on paper and that is a blast. That is the thing I enjoy most about art. So to answer that question, if you can get better at that, you just need to keep referencing stuff and understand that as you gain more references and learn how to draw more things, then later on down the road, it might be a long time. It might be a long time of work. It took me years to where I, I'm really having fun with it now and feel like I have enough in my head to where I can just sit down and draw anytime I want and draw whatever's in my head. It took me a long time to get there. So yes, I believe you, through reference, through learning how to draw different things, different shapes, all kinds of stuff like that, um, you can get better at drawing from your imagination. So if you're frustrated, stick with it. I mean, it's one of those things where just like anything else, it's the hard work. You have to work hard to really get to a point where you're, you know, you feel like you're capable of uh, doing what you want. Okay, here's another question that I get a lot. Uh, did you notice your, uh, yourself getting continuously better with your artwork, or was there ever a moment in doubt where you didn't see progress, the progress you wanted? Yes, there's to there's so many times where. I look down at the paper or a drawing that I had done and I think the worst ones are the ones where I'm like, hey, that's a pretty good drawing. And then later I look at it and I'm like, that drawing sucks. And that's where you really have to fight the urge to, you know, get down on yourself. I mean, there's, like I said earlier, there's so many amazing artists out there. It's easy to look at somebody and say, gosh, that person's so much better. Why do I even try? And that's where I think the core of art kind of, I mean, do you really enjoy it? Are you doing it to impress people? Are you doing it to make money? Do you really enjoy it? Because if you really enjoy it, that's what's going to push you through those times where you think you feel like you suck. Because uh, I felt that tons of times. There's been times where I hadn't drawn for months uh, for very long periods of time just because I thought, what's the point? You know, and now I'm at a place where I draw every single day practically and I, and it's one of the more enjoyable parts of my life. So, um, yes, there's definitely been times where I felt like, why am I doing this? I suck. So everybody goes through that. You got to push through it. You got to realize why do you draw? Because you enjoy it. And then as years go by, you see improvement slowly. I never felt like, oh, one week there was a huge jump from the previous week in skill level. It's something where I look at my art now versus when, let's say I was in high school and I know I'm immensely better than I was then. So that makes me feel good. Maybe it's time. Time, if you've stuck with drawing, you should be able to look at your art now and say, wow, I'm much better, so. Okay, so for my last question, this was a more recent question. Uh, 
because I, you know, I, I would love to make this video an hour long. I easily could with questions from you guys. So maybe if you had questions that didn't get answered, um, you can ask those in this video for another Q and A. Uh, but here's a question somebody asked recently. Uh, one of my most popular videos is the Justin Bieber how to draw uh, realistic photographs um, from pictures or how to draw realistic from photographs. Uh, but anyway, so somebody asked, you know, they said, and it seemed like a really great question. Some people are just like, this is stupid, it's tracing. Uh, I hate comments like that because they don't encourage any kind of, you know, conversation back and forth. But this person said, you seem like a great artist. I just don't understand why it seems that you're encouraging people to trace. There is, this is a long question. The, just that simple statement is you're talking about my opinion totally on art and that video I could do a whole nother video just explaining that video uh, but here is kind of my idea behind that when I as a graphic designer as an art director I work on stuff that the number one goal as a graphic designer is to convey information it's not to make things look pretty the prettiness is supposed to help you convey information to a person that's looking at the product you're creating or the you know the typography you're using everything is about conveying information uh, to the consumer or whatnot and we learned this in college and illustration can be pulled into the fine art world and it can be pulled into graphic design any technique is fair fair game in graphic design because the rule is who cares about how you got it done, the number one thing is the information. So if you need an image to look like a person, but you also want the it to be an illustration just for the, um, the way it looks, to help the design, to get the point across, maybe you're looking for a more authentic message that you wanna send, you use a transfer technique. There's no room, there's no reason not to. You know you can get it way more accurate to look like the person if you use a transfer or a projector or something like that for your design, for your illustration because you don't. nobody cares how you did it when you're producing a product. Now, if you go into the fine art world, there might be a little bit more um, reason to say, okay, well, this person's tracing this or you know and they might look down upon you for that but even then I mean look at Warhol I mean he made prints of already of pictures of people his art was more about the idea uh, versus the technical skill so this these are famous artists that use projectors transfer techniques Chuck Close is a perfect example super photographic he did blew up huge images and used the grid system to basically paint by numbers of these squares uh, there's a famous video or there's a video now from um, Penn and Teller called Tim's Vermeer which if you've taken art history there's a famous artist uh, it's I think Albert Durr uh, I don't know how you really I think that's how you sell his face name but anyway he did these amazing, he's a Dutch artist that did these amazing paintings, super ultra realistic. And in this video, they explain that they believe he used mirrors to basically do a tracing technique. And he's been coveted as this, as this amazing artist throughout. Uh, and yet you, you know, do you look down upon him now because you know he used a tracing technique? He's still famous for art. And there's a lot of modern artists, comic book artists, that I know use this technique, uh, use techniques similar to it. So I will say the only downside to this technique is that you're not going to learn anything from doing it. But if you're already accomplished artist, there's no reason not to. If you're going for the likeness of someone and you're producing a product, there's no reason not to use this technique. Now. If you're an artist that is trying to learn how to become a better artist and learn to draw and see the world and um, you know reference stuff, I do not recommend you practicing by using this technique or producing art this way because you're not going to learn anything from it because you're t tracing it. You can learn to render really well, like look at um, a lot of artists on YouTube that do those celebrity portraits, which is what that video was about. Uh, they're using techniques like that. 
exactly like that, and all they're doing is rendering it, but they're some of the biggest people in art. If your goal is to become a famous artist or to make a living as an artist, use any technique or means necessary to produce art that people really like. Okay, so that's, I guess, I mean, there's so many things I'd like to say about that, and I hope I covered all of it. There's just, I feel like I can never get as clear as I want to be about that with you guys. Uh, I really want you guys to have a very clear understanding of where I fall on techniques and my idea of art and graphic design and how they're very different. Okay, so, but despite all that, let me talk a little bit about my theory on art as far as the idea versus the technique. And this is why I don't have problems with tracing techniques and things like that. When you learn to draw, for me, and this is my total my opinion, all this is, but when you learn to draw, you are drawing to accomplish something in your head. For me, I don't enjoy the process of going like this with my hand and having nothing going on in my head. It's not, oh, I'm gonna sit here and just draw this and not think about anything, and I'm just gonna, like if somebody asks me to draw something random, I'm like, I don't, I wanna enjoy drawing that. It's not an original idea. So my idea about art is, it's all about what's in here. The skill you acquire by practice and stuff is just a tool. A tool to put down on paper what it is that's in here. So all these years of drawing should be not to impress people or it should just be focused on you developing a skill that allows you to create things based on your ideas out of your head. And really that's what's appreciated about art throughout you know, a lot of our history is, like, like I said earlier, Jackson Pollock, Warhol, those are very famous artists. And as a younger artist, I hated them. I was like, why? I'm so much more skilled. Why these guys just scribble or, you know, use, tra because art is more about the appreciation of what's in your head and the ideas behind the art you're producing. Even my, the, my favorite artist, Caravaggio, what I really liked about him, because the masters of the Renaissance were all masters, they were all technically sound and amazing artists, but I love Caravaggio because the ideas behind his paintings. I mean, at, during that time, he took on the ideas of the Catholic Church. A lot of his paintings were direct like slaps in the face to the church at the time. I mean, he basically took God and religion and pulled it down to the commoner's level, which was unheard of. And so his ideas are really what I loved about his art. I mean, but through his technical prowess, through his skill, he was able to convey exactly what he wanted to. So that, in a nutshell, is what I appreciate about art. And what I love about art is your artistic skill is just a tool to, for you to convey your ideas to the outside world. Um, I hope that makes sense, but to me, in my personal opinion, that is what I focus on in art. Um, that's why I bounce around all over the place. I, I'll draw robots one week, I'll draw traditional nudes the next, always trying to hone my skill to get better so that I can perfectly show you what I'm thinking in my head or my ideas or my imagination. Um, so. Yeah, I, f I feel like that last little part really, uh, in a nutshell, summed up how I feel about art. I hope that clears that up for you guys. Uh, but anyway, so that's my Q&A. Like I said earlier, if you guys have more questions that I didn't get to in this Q&A, ask them below and we'll, I'll do another Q&A, hopefully sooner than it took me to do this one. But I hope you guys liked the video and uh, thanks for watching.